Hi folks, Steve here and welcome to my new video. Today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm painting one of the new Necron Overlord models from the Indomitus box. So let's crack on. Okay, so with the model assembled, we're going to prime it and I'm just going to prime it a plain black because that's going to work really well with the metallic paints that are going to go over it because being a Necron, it's going to be largely a metallic model. Uh, now I don't normally paint Necrons. This is the first one that I've ever painted in fact. Uh, but the uh, the models from the Indomitus box set are just they're just so good that I really just wanted to paint one. So we're going to see how this goes. I was kind of uh, making up this paint scheme as I went along, so this is a, a bit of an experiment. Next, I want to lay on a base colour for the model. And um, for this, I'm going to use Vallejo Modeler Rust, and you could use any similar kind of colour, some kind of metallic bronze colour. You could mix one using a little bit of gun metal and some gold and maybe a little bit of brown as well. Just use whatever you're happy with. The main purpose of this is to give us a good uh, weathered kind of rust-like colour underneath to work on when we're adding colours on top. For this next step, I'm going to use a silver metallic colour called Chain Mill. And for this I'm going to be using basically a, a kind of overbrush technique to paint it. So I would use the same kind of brush as I would normally use for dry brushing. Uh, I'm not going to have it quite as dry as what you would as a dry brush. Uh, I'm still going to be quite a bit of paint on. But uh, I'm still going to use the same kind of techniques I'm going to be brushing on in a fairly downward motion with quite controlled strokes to deposit the paint on the upper areas so we're still going to have the rust colour underneath so that's still going to be visible in the shadows it's not going to be completely coated and I'm just going to go back and forth over the model at this stage uh, to make sure I've got some decent coverage particularly on the upper and the larger areas of the model Moving on, I want to add a bit of complexity and depth to those metallic colours we've got going on there. So for this I'm going to use uh, two washes. These are army painter tones. There's the strong tone and flesh tone. Um, so the idea here is I'm not going to mix them um, on the palette. I'm going to mix them on the model so it's a little bit of, of wet blending almost. Uh, I'm going to use the, the darker tone of wash further on down the model and the lighter tone towards the top and I'm just going to allow the two to, to naturally mix and blend on the model and uh, I'm not going to be um, overly concerned about there being too much overlap because that's that's kind of the point and that's going to help give the model um, a bit more of an aged and, and interesting look to it. The focus on my camera is not doing a great job of picking this up today but um, I'm sure you can work out what I'm doing. You can see there that I'm just I'm doing the entire model. I'm not being overly cautious about it at the moment because we're going to go in and things will get tidied up along the way as we complete the model. Now we're going to start to get a bit more colour on the model. The first thing I'm going to take is some Army Painter Green Tone, which is a, a green wash as the name implies. And I'm going to use this for the, the tubing and the pipe works that's coming out of the back and, and into his weapon and I'll just go over that and that'll give that metallic uh, colour uh, a nice green tinge to it and I'll repeat this a couple of times as well to build that and make it look quite bright to stand out from the, the planar metal. Keeping with the washes I'm now going to move on to a purple tone and I'm going to apply that to these sort of chain like things that are hanging off the uh, the front of him and also the kind of long cloth piece I suppose you could call it that's uh, between his legs and so I'm going to get uh, again a couple of nice layers of that to, to really start tinting the uh, the metal that colour and I'm also going to work a, a bit of a red tone as well into the lower parts of those two chain things um, again, like we did with the with the dark and flesh tones earlier, um, allowing these to mix while they're still wet. Um, it's a really good way of just getting a, a nice blend from one colour to another. It gives you a nice gradient. So I'll keep dipping back with my brush. I'm going to purple up at the top. And then as I'm bringing it down and getting towards the bottom, I'll start to put the red in as well and just allow the two colours to naturally flow together on the model. Now I'm going to turn to the iconography that's on his chest. Um, 
again, the camera's gone a little bit out of focus here, but you can still see the area that I'm focusing on. I'm taking a colour called Goblin Green, good old Goblin Green, and uh, I'm going to work this into those areas that have got the, I suppose we'll call them Necron runes, on the, the area around his chest there. And I'm just going to give it a light coat to begin with and I'm focusing more in the, the middle of those panels, even though they are quite small, but I, I want the, the cord to be concentrated in the centre area where the runes are, and so I'm just going to uh, go around and get those filled in. Doing a couple of nice thin passes here at this point will really allow that core to build up, and it also gives you uh, a good measure of control over where you want it and how powerful you want it. Um, once I'm happy with that, I'm then going to return to my uh, Army Painter Green Tone and I'm going to work that in again all around it, but this time I'm going to focus it on the, the outer edges, so the rims of these panels that have the runes on, so we get the, the darker green there, so that's going to give us our shading for this section. And again, don't be afraid of going back in with that green wash to, to really deepen the shadows and bring out that green colour. and um, same again, um, don't be afraid to go back as well with the Goblin Green which you'll see me do in a minute as well so I'm just going to try and boost out that centre again because I, I want the green to be really vibrant um, and you can go back and forth as many times as you want with something like this until you're happy with the, with the balance that you get. So here like I said uh, I've gone back in with that Goblin Green um, going around picking out the, the runes themselves and the areas around the runes. We're going to put some more colour on the runes uh, but it just helps to, to lift it up if we've got a brighter base that we're working on so boosting that green is going to make the final effect look very nice. And now I'm going to bring some yellow into the mix. Yellow is a, a great colour for boosting the vibrancy of um, any green when you're wanting to do a highlight, but particularly when you're wanting some kind of uh, glowing or power effect, something that's going to stand out really nice against the darker green. And um, so I'm using a colour called uh, Demonic Yellow by Army Painter. I'm going to mix it in uh, just a little bit with the green I was using first, just to uh, straighten my palette there and start going around picking out the runes and um, as I keep going I'll build it up bit by bit and then I'll start focusing more on the centre, uh, particularly on the centre part of his chest, that little sort of coffin shaped med medallion and uh, that's where I'll really start to build up the pure demonic yellow to, to really make that pop. After that I also decided I was going to go back in with the purple and red washes that I'd used earlier on the, the particular metallic areas at the front and I went over them exactly the same process as before, again just to, to try and give that colour a boost. Uh, metallics are really good at uh, picking up any kind of tint that you put on them but sometimes that repetition, uh, just doing it again and again until you're happy, it really lifts the colour. And now I felt like I was ready to start getting a bit of weathering onto the model, some rust. Um, as I've said before, there are, there are many different ways of doing this. Uh, the products that I'm using at the moment, I've got some um, liquid weathering pigments. <laughs> Couldn't even say that right. Liquid weathering pigments from Green Stuff World, um, which is basically the, the wet version of the, the dry weathering powders that you can get. Um, use them quite like a paint or a wash um, so I've been experimenting with them uh, quite a bit recently and really enjoying them but uh, you can easily use um, even just orange um, and orangey brown paints just thinned down as a wash I've used them on skeletons and things like that um, that's really good for, for rusted old armour um, and of course there's, there's hundreds of different products out there so you just go with whatever your favourite way of doing rust is uh, this just happens to be the one that I'm using at the moment. Um, so what I want to do is to get um, some of the rust built up around the um, the joints of the model where things interconnect. Um, also the, the lines along plates, any little rivets, things like that, all the little joints. Uh, it's really up to yourself how far you want to take it. Um, because I've not painted a Necron before and I don't want to go too over the top 
um, too early on. I'm just going to go around quite lightly at the moment, probably not hit it quite as, as much as, as strongly as I do with a lot of my other models. And um, we'll just see how that goes because I can always add more later if I want to. It's uh, much more difficult to take something off than it is to put it on. And whilst I was chatting away about that, you can also see that I painted the handle for the weapon just with a, a basic bed as well. And pretty much straight after that, I decided that I did want to go for more rust. And so I went back in, same again as before. I don't think I showed it, but I should mention that the, the handle of the weapon, once it was painted red, also got a quick black wash. Okay, now it's time to start getting some highlights onto the model. Um, I chose to use a metallic color called plate mail, which is a step or two above chain mail in the uh, scale of shininess according to Army Painter and so uh, again just with my uh, little detail brush I'm going to go around do some edge highlight highlighting um, using the the flat edge of my brush rather than the tip of my brush just give me a bit more control and I'm going to go around with a small amount of the paint on my brush and I'm just drawing little lines across the edges where I want um, you can dot, you can dab, you can do little scratches, things like that um, starting with the head of the model and uh, I think it's always good to, to focus quite a bit with your highlights on the head because it's one of the focal points of any model. You normally best choose in one or two areas that you, you're really going to concentrate on when you put the detail in like this and the, the head is always time well spent because that's one of the main things that people are going to look at. So I'm just going to go around to make sure that I've hit all the little bits and pieces that I want to catch light around the, the head and the face and then it'll just be a case of working around the model, finding all those areas. If you imagine where your light source is coming from, what parts of this model are going to be catching it, what kind of ridges are going to reflect light, and just paint the light on. Um, it's really worth taking your time at this point. This is probably the, uh, the longest part of the, the painting process for me, particularly on this model. Um, but it is one of the most straightforward ones because with the Necron being largely metallic, the majority of the highlights that I've done are just this one colour, this plate mail, uh, which makes a change actually because uh, a lot of the models that I paint have uh, lots of different materials and colours on them. So it's quite refreshing to be able to just go around working away just with the one colour um, just popping it on wherever I feel it needs it, having a quick look, check it in the light, hold it up, see what you think, go back in, carry on and uh, just really sort of relax and enjoy it, get into it, have a bit of a flow. Um, I found this part of it really quite enjoyable. So at this point I moved on to his right arm where he has that little kind of shield, like a buckler of some sort on there. And um, I really wanted to do like a, a glowy orb of doom on that. Um, so we went for a little bit of a, an OSL effect. Um, if you don't know what that is, if you haven't heard about it before, OSL is Object Source Light. Um, it basically means that there is a, an object on the Mini that is the source of light. And so you can't, you're painting a light effect showing that the light is, is emanating from that object. So it's fairly straightforward. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. Um, the way I go about doing this is to first paint it quite a light color. So to paint it white, um, for example, um, and then once I've done that, I'm going to lay over some uh, some glazes of the colour that I want the glow to be. So in this case, it's green. So the first thing I'm going to do is go back to my trusty Goblin Green and get a, a couple of glazes of green on, uh, nice and light. Taking my time again, let each glaze dry completely. It should be really quick because you're working with very thin paint, but make sure you do because otherwise you might just pull layers of paint off if you go back painting over before it's completely dry. Um, so yeah, we'll go over a couple of layers of green, let that build up really nice and bright. If you need to, you can always go back in as well with your white um, and that will really help boost the, the highlight and the, the glow effect. So go, you can go in again, touch it up a little bit and then go over again with your glazes and um, gradually, gradually build up layer and layer. Uh, it's quite a repetitive process. Um, you can see what I'm doing there, I'm just uh, keep going back and forth. Um, I'm going to use the same yellow again that I did earlier, the demonic yellow, um, to, to really boost that and to sell that glow effect. Um, and it's really something that you can just, you can experiment with, you can play around, you can have a bit of fun with, um, see how far you can boost it. You can always go in and add a bit more, you can 
put a bit of white in again and put some more green over to boost the, the green of it if you want to do that, if you, if you think you're taking it a bit too far in the yellow direction, um, just keep going. And I purposefully kept this part of the video quite long. I didn't didn't fade it out or speed it up very much, so you could actually just watch as I as I go about doing it. So I don't really have a set step by step process. I'm basically doing what I just said about putting on the glazes, um, adding the white, building it up, moving on to the yellow, getting a bit of yellow in, repeating back and forth as I need to. Uh, it's really a, it's kind of a trial and error. Or it is when I do it anyway, because I, like I said, I don't have a, a set process. So for me, it's every time I do it, it's an adventure. Every time I do it, it's an experiment. Um, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but you learn from it either way. This one, I think, went pretty well. I'm quite happy with it. And uh, so I thought I would keep as much of this footage in as possible so you could have a look how I do it. And uh, if you like what it looks like, you can do it the way I do it and if you don't then you know not to do it how I do it. The important thing to remember when doing OSL or what I think the important thing is is that it's it's your glazes that make it so be patient with them and just keep going and keep adding the layers and the the more layers you add um, the more of the effect you'll get because each time you're building up that sort of semi-translucent transparent uh, layer of paint and it's gonna it's gonna help sell that glowing effect for you so be patient with it it might look absolutely rubbish to begin with uh, but keep trying and keep at it um, the more layers you put on the better it's gonna look in the end I used exactly the same process for his eyes as well to give them a, a glowing effect it's just on a smaller scale and yeah I ended up pretty happy with that it's um, not the best I've ever done but it's certainly not the worst so yeah jobs are good okay on to the blade of his weapon I uh, didn't get too much footage of this but the the area that was still the original rust color had already had a, a green wash at that stage earlier on in the process and to finish that off all I did was a, a very gentle highlight by dry brushing with the um, the original colour, that kind of rusty gold colour, the uh, Vallejo Modeler Rust, um, yeah that's the one. I do find that it's always handy to keep hold of your older brushes rather than throw them out because they, they uh, come in useful for exactly this purpose if you want to do a bit more of a controlled dry brush rather than using one of the, the thicker regular kind of dry brush brushes. Now the blade of the weapon itself uh, already had the uh, Vallejo Urquil Rust on it and it had also had a bit of the red tone ink earlier uh, but what I wanted to do at this point was boost that so I took a combination of the same red that I'd used for the handle for the weapon and purple tone and using a mix of those two I was going over the blade focusing uh, more red to the, to the edge of the blade, to the sharp end and more purple towards the back um, but basically mixing them in it was a, a little bit of a, a wet blend going on there I do quite like using that technique you'll probably notice the idea here was basically to create the look of quite an ancient blade that possibly had lots of dried and encrusted blood and gore and lovely things like that on it Once that had dried, I went on to do the, the highlighting and the weathering step, which was pretty much all the same thing. Um, so going back to the uh, plate mail colour from Army Painter, the one that I used for the original highlights on the rest of the model, I uh, used that and again my fine detail brush and I went around and did a, an edge highlight as I would normally and then went around again and all these little these nicks, these scratches, these little bits of damage on the on the blade where it's chipped on whoever he's been hitting it with uh, I've gone round and I've done all those and that's uh, really the only way to do that is just a little bit of patience just keep your hands steady and just make lots of nice little lines and scratches um, and just go all the way around and just be persistent with it if I can say the word and um, 
I would go around again and again and again. So I'm making multiple passes there just to allow it to build up. Um, just make sure that the paint on your brush is um, it's not too dry. Don't leave it too long before going back to, to dip it on your palette, particularly with metallic paints because they can be quite quite clunky because of the, the flakes of metal in them. So if you allow them to allow the paint to dry too much on your brush when you try to do something like this, you're never going to get a proper little fine line. It's always going to look a bit wobbly um, and you, it's just not going to look too good. Okay, so we're, we're right near the end now. We're on the home stretch. Uh, there was basically one finishing touch that I wanted to do that you can see here now, and that was to just use a, a bit of blue ink, some, some of that blue wash. Um, from Army Painter yet again. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Army Painter by the way, I've just been using a lot of their paints at the moment. Um, I just wanted to get this uh, blue tone into the, the upper parts of the, the metal that I've been tinting with the purple and with the red because uh, obviously blue and red make purple so red's good for kind of like a highlight of purple and blue's good for a shadow for purple so I wanted to work that into the, the upper areas where it would be a little bit darker so I just thought that helped boost the contrast a little bit, help the purple and red stand out a little bit more um, and that was more or less it. And there we go, all that's left for me to do is show you some photos of the finished model. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, it was a bit of a different experience for me, a bit of a change. Um, if you liked it, please let me know. Uh, thanks very much for watching, see you later.